What's up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2022 Toyota GR86, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because it is the GR86. Completely refreshed look for the 2022 model year. You got a larger engine, a revised chassis, one of the few cars out there right now that still offer affordable funds so i'm pretty darn excited to be in this one today so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering throw ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so msrp for the six-speed manual will start at twenty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars msrp for the six-speed automatic starts at twenty-nine thousand two hundred, which is the one we have today then there's actually a premium six-speed manual for thirty thousand three hundred, and then the premium six-speed automatic for thirty one thousand eight hundred dollars but Regardless of which configuration you go with, the power plant on the GR86 is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder. It's not turbocharged, so that's pretty cool for reliability especially, but 228 horsepower, very impressive there. At 7,000 RPM, 184 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3,700 RPM. Power sent to rear wheels, again, through a six-speed manual or six-speed automatic. Zero to 60 time is gonna differ pretty substantially depending upon which transmission option that you go with the manual transmission is going to give you that zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds extremely impressive there the automatic however puts it at 6.6 .6 seconds so like i said pretty darn big difference there overall weight for this thing comes in at 2838 pounds so it, it is super light red line comes in at 7500 rpm top speed 140 miles per hour for the manual 134 miles per hour then for the automatic mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 27 highway for the manual 21 city 31 on the highway then for the automatic taking premium unleaded fuel but so now before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our gr86 do want to mention to you guys the drive modes the drive mode buttons are located directly behind the shifter you got sport snow normal and track essentially adjusting things like the shift points a throttle response and gauge cluster to a certain degree and the steering sensitivity it's noticeably weightier i just put it in that sport driving mode so that is pretty cool i like that and then it kind of loosens up a little bit but still very nice steering feel either way we'll get to that in a little bit but anyways have I got all of that out of the way? What do you guys say? Let's put it in sport driving mode here. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration to the test all at once here. Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters react and let's see how quickly we can get the new GR86 here up to speed. All right, you guys, so it's a little bit slippery out today, but here we go in three, two, hang on, manual shift mode and one, here we go. Quick, paddle shifters are actually quick, surprisingly. I like it, I mean, it's that. It's not as quick as I thought it was gonna be as far as overall acceleration goes, but the paddle shifters actually work very, very well, which I was kind of hesitant because this is kind of an affordable, fun to drive car, but still affordable. But the paddle shifters work really, really well. It's an instant reaction there. So I'm still thinking, I've driven the six speed manual in the Subaru BRZ as well as the old Toyota 86. And that's absolutely amazing, quite honestly. It's a very easy vehicle to learn how to drive manual on if this is gonna be your first vehicle, but the paddle shifters did pretty well, so I did not mind them, I'll put it that way. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front disc with two piston front calipers. In the back, 11.4 inch solid rear disc with single piston rear calipers. Also for anyone who plans on giving drifting a shot in the 86, I did wanna mention there is a traditional center handbrake that comes standard on either transmission option, so you don't have the electromechanical parking brake like you do in most cars these days. You do have the handbrake, so you can use that for a little bit of drifting if you wanted to go that route as far as 60 to zero stopping distance goes it comes in at in a very very impressive 107 feet and by the way as far as braking feel goes it is a very firm braking feel so definitely something you're looking for in a car like this a more fun to drive car more sports car so the braking feel is 100 on point in the gr86 the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but all 
also GR circuit tuned coil springs, shock absorbers, iron front knuckles, and rear suspension mounted stabilizer bar as well. So this thing is tuned for the track. And by the way, we do have that track mode. So this thing is definitely tuned for the track. So that is definitely a good thing. And uh, as far as ride quality goes, you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road in vehicles like this. So that is gonna be there for you, of course. As far as steering feel goes, it's dang excellent, especially in that sport driving mode. I feel like I could just toss this thing around like crazy. It's such a small little fun to drive car. So yeah, the steering feel is definitely excellent. I still have it in that sport driving mode, so it is wonderful. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going 36 miles per hour right now, but you do tend to hear a little bit more of the road when you get up to higher speeds. And if you put it in that sport driving mode, you hear a little bit of the engine as well, which isn't a bad thing in my personal opinion, but you do get a little more of that just because of the size of the car. And then touching on visibility, because it's so small, you can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely not going to have any issues there, but Pam Rich rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Toyota GR86. All right, you guys. And so here she is, the new 2022 Toyota GR86 finished in track red. This is such a good looking car. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Gloss black front grille does come standard. You actually get the GR or Gazoo Racing badging found in the upper portion of that one corner there as well. Front air curtains again finished in black as well. Well, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination which is always helping assist with aerodynamics then to the sides led headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board gotta love that for added illumination at night they also get auto leveling feature which is pretty cool they get led daytime running lights they got the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there the automatic transmission configurations actually get automatic high beams as well meaning when you have your high beams on and you're going around a bend at night those high beams are going to automatically automatically dim back to low beams if it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction and then it's automatically going to put that back up to high beams again when that vehicle is gone so that's definitely an added little safety feature really in itself but the premium automatic trim is also going to give you adaptive front lighting so those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a person or a cyclist or whatever the case so definitely pretty nice there too but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one again insanely good looking front end but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right and so now since we are around to the side black window surrounds do come standard functional black air outlet vents found in the front fenders and let me actually get a little bit closer up here so i can show these to you guys they are finished in gloss black you got the gazoo racing badging found within that as well and yes I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but they are actually functional. There is a pass through. So added aerodynamics yet again, that is pretty darn cool. So I wanted to emphasize it, but touching down on the mirrors, they are gloss black power adjustable side mirrors and they will be heated for every single trim level across the board then as well. You have body colored side skirts as well. Definitely look good there. Taking a look down at the wheel configuration, 17 inch machine finished alloys is going to be the standard configuration that you guys are currently looking at right now. But there are 18 inch matte black alloys that are going to come with the pre premium trim level so a little bit different configuration there then you do have some led side marker lights found on the kind of corners of that front bumper there so i wanted to mention that but overall that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one i'm going to try not to slip on this ice right below me here but there is an integrated duckbill rear spoiler coming with a premium trim however even if you don't go with that premium trim you kind of have somewhat of an integrated rear spoiler like you're looking at right now anyway so that definitely looks good LED taillights with the C-shaped design. LED taillights come standard for every single trim level. You gotta love that as well. Of course, you have the GR86 Gazoo Racing badging found on that rear trunk there as well. Just below it all, you do have that matte black accenting on that rear bumper, which gives it a little more aggressive look there to the sides dual exhaust outlets and they are pretty large dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here, is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the 86, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is also a button by the driver's side left knee. 
and there is a black rubberized button directly on top of or directly above the Toyota logo in the back there as well. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 6.26 cubic feet, which quite honestly isn't a whole lot, but this is a smaller vehicle, so I guess it makes sense. But those rear seats do fold down. There's some buttons on the top portion of the seats themselves if you need a little extra space there for any kind of pass through. Do want to also mention just underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a tire inflator kit as opposed to an actual spare tire, more than likely to save some weight when it comes to that. So wanted to mention it. Then making our way up to the rear legroom, then just going to come in at 29.9 nine inches i'm quite honestly not even going to try that maybe you could fit a small child in there if you move the seat up a little bit but there isn't a whole lot of rear leg room going on in the back of the 86 which makes sense although i do appreciate that it has back seats though that's definitely good then make our way up to the front seats cloth seating is going to come with the standard configuration ultra suede finish is going to come with the premium trims you will find manually adjustable front seats that come standard across the board heated front seats then are going to come with the premium trim levels only but overall they are kind of bucket seats they have nice bolsters to them so to better help hold you in place when you're drifting or whatever so very nice very comfortable seats here in the 86 i certainly didn't have any issues there then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped across the board you gotta love that and you do have the gr badging found on the bottom portion of that steering wheel then as well then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here it kind of uh, looks like a subi key but you do have all of your buttons located on one side you got your toyota logo that is going to be the unlock button the lock button just above it and the button to pop the rear hatch just below it but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do simply put my foot on the brake and press that gr engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up there is a seven inch digital gauge cluster that is going to come standard so no analog gauges in this thing so that is pretty cool to adjust what is on that gauge cluster you can do that by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side there you got some g4 statistics which is pretty cool there's actually a laptop timer up there as well you could check out your radio information there's some safety features the list goes on so really it's quite a bit up there average miles per gallon at any given time i like that i think i'm gonna leave it on the g4 statistics though that's pretty cool but anyways of course with the drive modes that's going to adjust the gauges a little bit if you put it in sport mode it's going to give you a lot more red hues you take it out of that it's going to put it back to normal and it's going to let you know if you're in snow driving mode at the very bottom then as well if you were to do that but take a look then and overall interior quality dual zoom climate control does come standard aluminum foot pedals for the premium trim levels only you do have some nice smooth black finishes found just surrounding the shifter i will say that is very easy to clean i have that in my own vehicle as well so i actually like that finish a lot again you got your handbrake just behind the shifter you have a single cup holder just behind all of that and then within the center armrest you actually have two more cup holders so hooray there's some extra cup holders there there's actually an auxiliary port and two usb charging ports found just in front of the cup holders there as well which is pretty cool and actually that's a brilliant idea i was wondering about that because with this vehicle having android auto apple carplay you do have to hook it up manually via usb cable i was wondering if the usb cable is going to be located in front of the shifter because then if you go with a manual transmission that's going to obviously keep getting in the way so i like that they put the usb charger within the center armrest that definitely makes that a heck of a lot more convenient for actual driving but anyways that kind of leads me into the tech an eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard bluetooth and audio streaming like i said android auto apple carplay as well you can actually check out some maintenance information up there like when you need your next oil change which i absolutely love that i like that they put it up there as opposed to the gauges it's pretty cool gives you your outside temperature up there as well it gives you your radio information everything worked pretty darn quickly as well there wasn't a whole lot of lag whatsoever to that uh infotainment screen but anyways when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them there's a six speaker sound system that comes standard with our bass trim level but then there's also an eight speaker sound system that come standard with the premium so having said that since we do have the six speaker sound system here with us today let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one honestly it's not bad and the reason i say this i think it's because it's such a small vehicle six speakers i was kind of hesitant because i've heard i don't know hundreds of six speaker sound systems at this point but it's not bad in the size of the vehicle that the gr86 is i'll put it that way and honestly the eight speaker sound system should sound amazing in this thing because again it's such a small vehicle now having said that the bass wasn't the most i've ever heard but 
I think the eight speaker might compensate for that a little bit, but the six speaker sound system was actually pretty darn good because again, the size of the vehicle. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the GR86 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. There is a tire pressure monitoring system System. But then if you were to go with the premium trim, you're actually going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And then if you were to go with either of the automatic transmission trim levels, you will get a pre-collision system, pre-collision throttle management, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning and sway warning and automatic high beams as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Hachi Roku, great entry level drift car. It's one of those things, if you can't afford a Z, maybe the Hachi Roku is definitely gonna be where it's at. So the other thing is not many cars like this really exist anymore. The other car that I can see this being compared to the most is probably the Mazda Miata. But then again, if you were to go to the coupe version of the Miata or the Miata RF, you're looking at what, 45 grand or something like that. Whereas this thing is 30,000 or just under 30,000. So this really is a heck of a deal for a fun to drive car at a lower price point as far as comparing the trims a little bit if you wanted more of the safety features obviously go with the automatic that's where you're going to get all of the safety features that you don't get on the manual but on the other hand if you want more performance definitely go with the six speed manual because you're going to be able to drift that one a heck of a lot better it's going to be a heck of a lot quicker to 60 as well and quite honestly like i said if that manual is anything like the last generation it's extremely easy to drive so definitely a very nice manual to learn how to drive on really the only constructive criticism i can think of is uh uh, the Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I do like that the wires are located within the center armrest, but still wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay would definitely be for the better. I know Toyota can do it. They do it on a lot of their other vehicles. So definitely wouldn't have minded if they put that maybe at least on the premium trim level of the 86. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Let me know what you think of the GR86 in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming up next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.